We're more than just talk. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. We've got a rowdy crowd up in this piece tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, reaching out to the four corners of the globe and broadcasting to you live from the studios of LA Talk Live, just outside of beautiful LAX Airport. Welcome to tonight's edition of Speak On It with my usual suspects. We've got Radio Raheem on the mic. What up, though? That's right. That's right. I'm in the building. His voice is so big and beautiful and strong and robust. I love it. We've also got the official sponsor of Speak On It and L.A. Talk Live, our corporate attorney, Stephen Bird. He's been elected tonight. Indeed, that is your new role with us here at L.A. Talk Live. Rousing round of applause. Thank Welcome you for having me. Counselor Bert joins us tonight. We're very, very blessed to have on the mic with us tonight. You see him there in his dark shades. Uh, man, one of the coolest, most talented cats I've met in all my time here in Los Angeles. That is the inimitable Stevie Wonder! No, that's Shaquille Williams. Give him a rousing round of applause. Thank you very much. Uh, It's a pleasure to be here with, once again, a distinguished panel here on LA Talk Live and here on Speak On It. Thank you very much, Mr. Carr. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, We've also got some very special guests in the house. We've got the folks, the producers, and the talent from an all new show that's going to be launching their pilots. Uh, this coming Monday at 7 p.m., mm-hmm. Battle of the Sexes is in the house. Just give it up for him. All right. Oh, yeah. Sherrod Moore, Battle. Jay right, Rios. Right. Battle. We've also got the second busiest man in radio. Uh, Farron Dozier joins us in the studio hey, tonight please. as well. He's got about 2011 shows, almost as many shows as the Jamaicans got jobs, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So he's here today uh, as a layover from uh, one of his shows that he is both a producer and host of, and that is one of the most important shows on our network, and that is a show called Trench Talk for about the vets, all about the vets, and by the vets as well, because they're all vets. Sergeant Ferran Dozier, 20 years in the U.S. Army, big ups for that. All right. Uh, let's see. I don't remember Van's specification but van eric marshall of course is co-host of that show and the lovely christina silva who is also a retired marine is the host of that show so that's for about and by vets tune into that every friday in its new time 3 p.m pacific right here on la talk live where it's more than just talk um we also have a mystery guest in the studio uh, we're not going <laughs> to shout him out just yet in case uh, his wife didn't give him permission to hang out this late. It is after six, you know, on the West Coast. Uh, but we'll, maybe we'll get him to come on the mic with us tonight. Speak on uh, it. Speak on it. Yeah, that's what it is tonight from 6 to 730. It's going to be a fun night. Lots to talk about. And I know you gentlemen are revved up and ready to go. My usual sp- suspects once again, Radio Raheem, Stephen Bird, Shock Kim Williams. Welcome back to the show, gents. What's Thank going you. on with you? Oh, man. It's a, be- it's a beautiful day. And you see I wore my bow tie because I'm about to get real black. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it got a little dark on that side of the room as you guys are revving up for the show and getting ready with your dialogue. So I'm, I, I, I know that's how it's going to go down tonight, I got to tell you. And, uh, you know, I understand we have a... Um, uh, some bean pies coming through a little bit later. Yes, so, uh, yes, yes. And I put it in a order from Muhammad Speaks. The brothers will be bringing those through later. Bean pies, security. Bean so save well. some space. Save some space. Don't drink yes. too much of this brew. No doubt, no doubt. 
All right, fellas, so let's get right to it, man, because we're going to have a pretty busy show tonight. And it turns out that unlike what most people think, 90 minutes is really not that much time. So we're four minutes into the show. I'm going to swing the mic right now to the one and only Radio Raheem. Man, this brother is all over the place with all the hot news from the boxing game. Uh, If you know anything about this cat, he knows everybody in the game. And uh, we were watching and listening to a very heated discussion he had <laughs> with, a, with a well-known uh, person from the boxing industry. But I'll let Radio Raheem do all of that. Brother, welcome back to the show as always. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, okay, welcome right usually this is a, a fine hour for me. I feel good. Everything is bright and sunny. And yeah, my brother's here with me and we're talking right, to America. Good. But this is it's been a dark week, Rich. Uh-oh. It's been a dark week. <laughs> you know, I was going to let... Um, Shakir get in there, but I don't really have time for that. The issue for me <laughs> is, you know, we 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 live this life all year with my with my gold and my orange. And last weekend, I was hurt. I was hurt, brothers. I was hurt. This uh, I don't know. You may be familiar with this young man. This week, although last week you had no idea who he was, uh, Dick Sherman. <laughs> wow. Went ahead Did he call and Dick? ruined my whole week, my whole season, my next Sunday. This clown ruined next Sunday for me. All I really don't Sundays. appreciate it. All of my Sundays. Next um, so for a little bit of clarity, our man is from the Bay Area of California. We're talking about Richard Sherman. Oh, Richard. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Defensive back for the Seattle Seahawks. You may know him as Richard. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) Those who became familiar with him last Sunday referred to him as Dick Sherman. (laughs) So whether or not you caught the game, I'm sure you caught the post-game interview by now. This was the uh, dreadlocked, aggressive. Hey, man, wait a minute, pal. Come on, thug. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, pal. Everybody with dress is not a thug. Very disrespectful of my San Francisco 49ers. And since then, he's made uh, quite a defense of his post-game actions and his reputation in general. Most of you remember that, he, you know, honestly, he didn't. Use any foul language. He wasn't vulgar, but he was he scared very. That, he scared he, that. He was lady. very frightening. He was yeah. very frightening at the post game. He shouted into the camera, which he's not the first one that I've seen do it. You know, I mean, Bark Scott is yeah. one of my favorite NFL. Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're a good football team. You know, I think that it was just so personal, and he was so aggressive. It looked like the camera was in his molars. Yeah. And that they couldn't deal with. And then I realized after watching a week of footage about uh, Dick Sherman, the mics were open and the c- cameras were on him between the last play and this interview. And you have to forgive me because I, I respect broadcasters, but I forget the young woman's name who conducted the interview. Which one? On the field? Right. Aaron. Uh, her name is Aaron. Aaron. Something. We'll call her Aaron. Yeah. That'll that'll narrow it down as far as white women are concerned. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> Amy. Aaron Amy. Let's call her so, that. He he was he was very aggressive with her, but bef- right before they turned on the cameras, national. Like if you go to NFL.com and watch the open mics. And the full footage, he grabbed her up in a King Kong style hug right before the interview went, which is why she was shaking. He was hyped. I think America fed off of that energy. It was a very terrifying experience for all involved. And when he rolled right into his comments, it was uncomfortable. And, and, and America just didn't know why. I think it was because he had, he had just recently borderline accosted uh, America's <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> so you, So you're saying that... The white woman that was watching, she was a little afraid, or was America? She was excited. She afraid. was excited. Thank America you. was afraid. Or was thank a, you. Or was white men afraid that she was happy that she was? <laughs> right. That element was there, but when he made his comments, he looked directly into the camera, and he was he was self-aggrandizing, which is what we do. That's part of our culture. Let's be real. Every black man, there's. I've seen black men talk more mess after winning a game of Madden or a game <laughs> of Bones. Are you serious? Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All this dude did was 
make a bomb play on the last play, which was a, an attempt at the go-ahead touchdown, to send his team to the Super Bowl, winning the NFC uh, championship against their division rival. Mm. Right, but at the post game, you're expected to be respectful of the of the team. The fights really? over, the games yeah, over. I don't know. <laughs> nah. Even even in fighting mm. sports, right? Even in fighting sports, boxing in particular. What about hockey? You, but okay, we're gonna move on. We're getting there. I know what you got in the holster. I know what you're trying to. I know what's okay, in the chamber, get, son. Well, <laughs> we gonna get there. Okay. You know this is what's wrong with you people. You just can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's expected to be some kind of uh, deference paid to the competitor. And honestly, when the video rolled and we saw him get mushed in the face, being his personality, I assume that he was over there talking mess, right? That he was over there taunting. Well, actually, he taunted. He wasn't uh, taunting Kaepernick. him. We know. He but, said, good game, patting him on right. his ass, and said, look. You know, and then he got mushed. He right. said, hell of a game. He said right, it twice. He, he extended his hand for a shake. And he got mushed. But we didn't. The poor sport <laughs> was Krabby Crabtree. Yeah, yeah. Who had got held down for most of the game. Didn't do anything. And then, anything. and and truthfully though, it really wasn't on Crabtree. I don't want to get into football analysis because we're talking about the social aspects here. But really, Kaepernick has no touch to his game. If he lost that into the corner, where only Crabtree can get to it, right. maybe we're having a different conversation, but He's he tries to bullet it in there. Right. Right. Luda took a hell of a play, but let me just say this on um, on behalf of Richard Sherman, <laughs> your <Somebody> brother, <laughs> otherwise my former known as dreadlock Beck. brother, <laughs> brethren dread, you know, Rastafari, you know what I'm saying? Dude, he graduated from Stanford University came from the hard knocks of, you know, of L.A., Compton or whatever, um, East L.A., all of that, Watts, all, you know, seeing all of that and brought himself up to graduate with honors now with a three point, maybe a three point six, something yeah, like I that. I hear a lot of people in, now, in and three so, years. And so they're calling, years. Him, they're calling him a thug. Right. And. You know that's a code word. When they say oh my God. you're a thug <laughs> or when they say you're well spoken, you you know those are code words for the so called nigga word. Uh, let, let's take I, some chronological approach because you know this has been right. unfolding throughout the right. week. Right. I can't and, say the so-called you know, n-word. So, you know, you I, know was, I was trying to get to the first fifteen before somebody said nigga. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> Somebody <laughs> Come on, man. It ain't nothing but niggas in here. No, I'm just okay. so, so, so what? So what? So what? Non-black America has never loved is a talented black man well that spoken. knows he's talented and he's not afraid to let everybody else know that he's talented. Muhammad this has Ali. been since Jack Johnson. Yeah. People want to bring it back to Muhammad Ali. It's been since Jack Johnson. Or probably even before that. It's probably a bunch of brothers that we don't even know that got killed <laughs> before That's the age bad, of, right? of, of, of TV and oh, history media. and all of that yeah, who yeah. stood up and said, I'm that nigga or in, in some form or <laughs> I'm another the and, nigga. And, and got and got clowned like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, hung, so they have never, ever loved it. They don't love Floyd. All he does is keep whooping anybody's butt they send his way. Same was with Muhammad Ali. Now, my 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 issue that I want to talk about here is two things that I want to talk about. They're kind of like caveats to this whole issue. One is that um, they never, ever loved that. But I don't care about that because I know how they get down. My thing is the brothers, the Tell black it. people Tell that it. jumped on this bandwagon and are getting on this dude's case. Tell and I'm talking about dudes who sit around playing Madden or slapping bones or whatever it is that they do that talk more shit than that. That ain't never won no NFC championship game. But now they're going to jump on the media bandwagon and okay, now, talk shit about this cat. Did you a 20 something year old cat. Man, I got I got kids 25? this dude's age, yeah. man. Did you see the social media, the way they attacked in him? Yes. There's so many yes. racist people. <laughs> I know. The way they attacked in the him was terrible. Here's the thing. <laughs> I wondered if anybody caught that. but uh. I meant to say attack. 
But look, some, here's there's an argument to be made. There's an argument to be made. You know, you're right. Floyd doesn't have those those kind of letters behind his name. Muhammad Ali didn't. Jack Johnson damn sure didn't. And that's the vehicle they use to self promote. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing particularly wrong with what he did. But I think where the objection comes is that with all that education, with all that articulate and academic prowess, you ought to be able to express yourself with a more fine tune. And and, to, and and less tone absolutely depth. not. This is not debate a, a, class. Expression. He is not having a debate. But this well, is, okay. he's not engaged. I, he's not in court. I, I would agree you, with he's this. He's not in court. You this can, is not an intellectual endeavor. He's involved in. I, I, this okay. is beast mode. <laughs> this <laughs> is the NFL. <laughs> they want you to this switch. is concussions and is hardcore battle. <laughs> and after the battle, and he was the victor in battle, he proclaimed himself the victor. But there's nothing As, exceptional about, about hey, beast mode. Hey, right? Amen. Hey, so man, man they love Russell Crowe. They mm. love Russell uh. Crowe and the Gladiator after he killed like 15 dudes and threw his sword in the crowd and said, are it's you not entertained? It's a movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they love it. This is entertainment, though. Okay. Love it. But when he's on E! Entertainment television, he doesn't whip out his sword and be like, are you entertained? Hey, man, he still there's talks no, shit. There's no, there's no differential between what's entertaining and what's acceptable except by which you have a ability to express yourself in a more refined fashion. Beast mode is not unique to Dick Sherman. What, what the, did you? What, the, it, all NFL, almost any NFL player could have done that interview. I think where people have ex take exception, and your point is well made, but where people take exception is that one of the few cats that could have done better chose not to, and that's and that's not the best representation. So, but by, of him I stand or behind him hundred percent. But by that, whose standard, though? I stand who's behind the standard him. of those exactly. who object. Whose standard? But by the standard of those are, who object. Are the standards of your prosecutors? What, what what what? Prosecutors? You know what I'm saying, counsel? Yes, I do. Uh, I do know, <laughs> you know what, what the hell saying. going on. Don't act like the you don't know what the hell going on. Standards of the oppressor. <laughs> do I have to let you know who the oppressor <laughs> I, is? I think the word you're looking for is persecutors, but we're not going to we're not going to split hairs. The, the I don't I understand the objection of they're, they're co-signing co-signing with those who may every have day, a, a racial motivation. Every day they gotta. Put themselves up to someone else's standard instead of them being on their own standard. It's like Ebonics. But you don't think that that can be a legitimate beef, it's a just, legitimate standard that an educated like, person sees another educated a person who is uniquely what educated, is it, what who is, is exceptionally qualified so, to express themselves more finely. Let me just more, ask this question. More, look, why would that have to be? Uh, a white objection. Why can't a black person just, say, you give know what, you a good that example. is not a good representation of an educated black person. Me, and even after having win it, won the championship. Let me, let me I, give you what I'm say. After he goes, I'm going. So, Ebonics. What do you feel about Ebonics? You think that's a, a degre degrade on um, black people or, you know, with the way black people speak or in the street. They like, you know, instead of saying hello, they may say, what's up, shorty? So, and <laughs> So, I mean, I'm saying, is Ebonics bad to you? I mean, everything has a time and a place. Everything has a time and a well, place. Well, here's the thing. I'm going I'm to speak on that. This is not my point, but, but commenting on his point is interesting because I was watching Bill Maher, the, the, the uh, premiere of Bill Maher for the two, 2014 or 2014 season was last Friday. After I left here, I went and watched it, and he had uh, uh, Carvel on there, a right. the cat from Louisiana. That cat cannot speak, dude. He's at the highest echelon <laughs> of the Democratic and liberal uh, consultant and his wife game. Is terrible. He cannot yeah. speak. If a brother was to get on and speak like Carvel, dude, he you know he'd be Al ridiculed. Sharpton you know, has black a people program on MSNBC, <laughs> and he and is consistently say. and he's consistently <laughs> berated by his inability to read, <laughs> by his inability words, to read you know the he teleprompter. Wrote those words words that he can't read i mean that's phenomenal he didn't write those words first <laughs> yes i'm gonna else. agree with shock he, has, somebody somebody else write them. he <laughs> has a team of writers and they try to make it as simple as possible but i'm just saying my point about ebonics is is that people came out at one time saying we don't want our kids speaking ebonics but in actuality what they found out there's a tribe or tribal aspects in africa that what they do is change the dialect Right. Meaning that 
you may be speaking so-called what is true English? What is, you know, and granted, you want to be understood. I understand that you want to be understood so you can make your point across. But what some people do in some cultures is that they take dialect and then they switch this, it. This interview was not an intercultural experience. I'm not he saying with him, but he was, but, 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 but he was, going, but you? he was, he was expressing right. himself he, from Ebonics his cultural, it, it was real good English. He, he would, we no, understood he was what expressing you were himself from a cultural perspective. Just another term. Like if he was just speaking so-called Ebonics or expressing himself, dick. he was just that's expressing not, himself. That's, he wasn't that's, being a dick. He was just telling a crab tree, crab, crab, whatever dude, uh, look, look. crab sucks. <laughs> he sucks. He's the worst. He can't even play, and they should have threw him the ball. And that's all he was saying. Right. There's nothing unique or, you know, there's no historical reference to be made here. But this, then, is, this but is current that, dickish, But that's when they put the thug. dickishness. But they put this the thug reference to it. 2014 circuit dickishness so is exactly what we experienced after that game. Now, right? now, hold on. Now, now I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with you here. I'm kind of bring you guys together because I'm sitting in the middle of you guys anyway. <laughs> if. The response had been like one or two people being like, oh, that's that's effed up. He's a little dick for, for playing <laughs> crab sheet tree like that. Cool. But, you know, that it went much further than it that. Did. They did. assassinated this dude's character because he made the saying. play. It's like it's like as a black man, you can't do anything and take credit for it. You've got to be humble. You got to take you got, it. You got to keep your eyes down. Your Don't eyeball me, boy. When you see me on the sidewalk, you got to walk in the street and get out my lane because you don't have no or place walk with here. your head down. Exactly. Exactly. Don't look at my eyeballs. And don't say anything. That's why they promote. Now, and of Brady. all these Negroes that jumped on Crabtree's, uh, that jumped on the bandwagon and assassinating Crabtree, I bet you every one of them sits there talking about how much they love Muhammad Ali. And I'm going to tell you, all that uh, Vietnam War and, you know, the Viet Cong never called me nigga, all that stuff aside... Before he even made it to that point, from the time he left the Olympics Speak in 64, when he beat Sonny Liston and all that, it was, I'm pretty, I'm the best, Speak I'm a woman of ass, he's a big old bear, he ain't shit, I'm he a ain't butterfly. nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that's who he <laughs> like was. Butterfly. That's like part of our culture. Here's the thing, here's the thing. I, I partially agree with you, but here's where I, here's where I differentiate myself. At the end of the game... It's not I don't think it was about race in that moment. What what happened and unfolded throughout the week, yes, racially tinged, inappropriate. I do not agree with the overreaction to that interview. But in that moment, what you're accustomed to seeing, black, white, Chinese, Mexican, whoever's on that mic in that moment usually <laughs> shows some deference to the other team, does show some oh, humility. Boo. It's not incredibly exciting. <laughs> it's not an interview that you look forward to. Most people turn the game off immediately because those interviews are just wash. Now, I'm going to say this. with the way that he approached that interview, and the, and he wasn't talking about a, a, a white, the, the quarterback. He was talking about another black guy he was just being a dick and it was an inappropriate moment to express that. that kind of aggression and he just finished and, the game though look at the adrenaline that was when, pumping when when people saw and most people had no idea who he was i didn't know who the hell he was i wouldn't have picked him out of a lineup before this week i knew his name i didn't know what he looked like and all of a sudden his face is in my face screaming this shit's unsettling dude you know so dude what two happened week, two or three weeks prior two or three weeks prior your man, Tom Brady, media darling, a, a, a man so well respected, he has a moat around his house to keep out the plebeians. <laughs> He's a nut. Okay. This guy loses a game to Cam Newton. Cam Newton drives down, scores a touchdown. The Patriots, Tom Brady's the quarterback of that team. He drives down. He tries to, to, to uh, throw the go-ahead touchdown, but he throws an interception. Now, the ball is already intercepted by the linebacker before the safety hits his receiver. That's that's a football thing. We don't need to get into that. Sure. Whether it was a good call or a bad call, this dude is caught on mic, mic'd up after the game, rolling up on the referee and cussing him out. <laughs> right. Now, look, that is that is a he, dick. But he gets paid for that. He does not get accolades for that. No one's saying, oh, man, Tom Brady was the, so was right the bomb for that. And he was mic'd up. But he wasn't on camera doing an interview. He got caught on an open mic, and that is the, irrespective makes of it race. More of a dick. All I'm saying is, where is where is the all the tirade and everything against Tom Brady you for going batshit on but, a on an official? Guys, fair enough. Guys, hold on, hold on. Let, let, me, 
let me, let me just, it's getting really intense, man. You guys. Are, <laughs> Don't you ever interrupt me. <laughs> Don't you ever interrupt me. It's speak on I'm the, the best. best show. <laughs> now, check this out. You know, coming up at the bottom of the hour, we're going to be bringing on the cast and crew from an all new show that's going to be launching their pilot this Monday uh, here on the Talk Live Broadcast Network. It's called Battle of the Sexes. We have one of the producers and host of the show who joins us. He is a football player. Uh, he's looking real muscular and whatnot, too, so I know he's got a lot he wants to say. Hey, uh, one, two, one, two, on that mic for me. How's it going, everybody? There we go. Sherrod, right? Ladies and gentlemen, Sherrod, Sherrod Moore. All right. All right. Before, b- before, before we get too far into that, I just wanted to bring Sherrod Moore on to talk briefly about Jay Rios, uh, Sequoia Neff, who are going to be joining us shortly after the show, or rather after the break. Um, and very good. Thank you. Uh, after the break. And uh, I wanted you to talk a little bit about yourself, though, because you have a very unique background, my brother. And we're very, very proud to have you and your crew here joining us uh, this coming Monday, February 3rd well, um, is when the show launches, is what I'm told. But we got a we got a pilot on Monday to do, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we yeah, do. Okay. First Thank show you. ever. First very good. Show ever. Tell our listeners and viewers a little bit about yourself. Um, I am. Um, I'm a Long Beach native. I um, grew up in the hood, similar to uh Richard those. Richard Sherman. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Like Richard Sherman, Uh-oh. I was educated in a um, predominantly uh, Caucasian institution. Oh. Like Richard Sherman, I have played in the NFL and Speak I have on. played in the NFC Championship game, 1988-1999, Minnesota Vikings versus the Atlanta Falcons. Speak okay. Uh, okay. You know the dirty bird we get all that weird shaking from. Um, <laughs> so um, also uh, currently I work in the community with the kids. I'm a school teacher as well, and I'm a uh, international lecturer. Um, so I'm um, one of your co-hosts for Battle of the Sexes. Uh, myself, Mr. Jay Rios, and uh, beautiful Sequoia Neff will be coming to you guys uh, 7 o'clock on Mondays, Pacific Standard Time. What's your pilot so episode? That, that will be our pilot episode. Test so, the water, see what yes, it do. we're going to see if we can uh, trade with the sharks. Oh, we're going to make it do what it do. Trust me, you ain't got to see. We're going to make it do what it do. Yes, yes. All right. So, uh, All right, now you've got some comments uh, before the break. I had to get you in here just for a little taste of this, man. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> if you haven't met these brothers, Shotgun William, Attorney Stephen Bird, um, the boxing uh, expert, uh, Mr. Radio Raheem joins okay, us. Okay, okay. Uh, so, gents, say hello and go yeah, ahead, Sherrod. Right. We'll, we'll, if I saw me, amigos. You, you was chomping at you guys the bit to get on the, the mic over here. You had yeah. me over there dancing. Punching the wall. have no whatnot. rhythm. I'm a football player. Not only am I a football player, I'm I'm a defensive back. I was going to say you're um, DB, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know that I'm a DB. And um, the thing is, what you guys in, in America fails to realize, and Lawrence Taylor said it best, you want us to be a monster uh, for 60 minutes. You want us to go out there and knock heads off. You want us to kill people. You cheer when we knock the quarterback's helmet off. We break legs and so forth. You want that. And we give you that for 60 minutes. And as soon as that final whistle blows, you want us to shut it off. Um, football, I've been taught since probably Pop Warner, is controlled violence. That's all it is. It's controlled violence. That reminds, me, that reminds me of a perm. When black women <laughs> wear perms, it's like controlled damage. <laughs> Control violence. I get it, man. I get it. You are hitting, you are running and crashing your body into somebody at full speed as hard as you can for as long as you can. You know, we say we, you hit them hard and you hit them often until they don't get back up anymore. So when somebody is challenged the whole season and they reach their uh, their pinnacle at to that point, yes, they should be able to celebrate. Yes, uh, he should be able to say that he's the best because he's proven he's the best up to this point. His stats have shown it. The the plays have shown it. Now it should be okay for him to toot his own horn or even profess it. You know, um, it's 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 similar to your faith. You know, if somebody asks you, mm-hmm. "Hey, are you a Muslim? Hey, are you a Christian?" Here and you, no, nah, I'm, I'm I, 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 I I serve Jesus. I I, I serve my, I, you know I, I honor a lot. So, no, you profess it. You're proud of it. That's where you came from. So I, especially as a DB, a person who is constantly a defensive back is. I mean, DB is defensive back. You're constantly on the defensive. You're constantly being attacked by the offense. And you have to be able to take those hits, take make those plays, and so forth. So. Exactly. And it's a mano-a-mano battle. 
Well, you know what I'm saying? You know, I feel the like quarterback got five years. <laughs> <laughs> wrap it down, up. Wrap it up, they don't, they, don't, they don't just expect you to turn it off after 60 minutes. They just expect you to turn it off once the whistle blows. The whistle blew. That was a late hit. In that the drilling. They don't expect Come you. On, man, when, you, when, you when you get up off the field, they don't expect you, you to can't, tackle them again because you're still in you the game. You can't say that, but they're drilling and it's pumping so hard. She went to them after the game and was like, he's still like, ah! After getting mushed in his face. Yeah. Now, if he did that Monday morning, if yeah. you walk out his bed Monday morning, I'm the best, and he yeah. punches his wife out, you know, Richard Sherman would have a problem there. Yeah. 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 So, but not after so the game. We, we, we got to decide when it's over. It's, it's over when the whistle blows. Come on, that's, it's not like that's that. That's the man. rule. It's and not My that. mind is but never going to play talk shit. But, but with all that, <laughs> never but with all that said, hold on. I want to give Radio Raheem the final word before we go to the break. Go right ahead, I appreciate that insight. All jokes aside, that was that was very well said. Did you just call me well-spoken? <laughs> no, 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 no. Racist. I got I I to wait one more segment. I got to wait one more segment. You might have wrote that out. So <laughs> That was well said. We'll see if you're well-spoken in a half hour. <laughs> he said you right, wrote so it. look, ladies and gentlemen, you are intelligently tuned hand. into Speak On It. I am your humble host and moderator, Richard Carr, joined by Radio Raheem, Attorney Stephen Bird, the inimitable Shaq Kim Williams, and... My main man, Sherrod Moore. We're going to have to call you the authority up in this piece. <laughs> Coming after the break, we're going to be bringing on Sequoia and F.J. Rios, uh, producers and hosts of an all-new show. It's called Battle of the Sexes. It airs February 3rd, the inaugural broadcast. We're doing a pilot on a Monday. If you like what you hear and what you see after the break, you're going to want to tune in on Monday at 7 p.m. Stay tuned. Speak on it. We'll return right after this. The funny thing is, I meant to say this before I did the rap because y'all going to get pissed and want to jump in. Y'all doing all this shouting about this cat that just got a little violent on the microphone. Ain't saying nothing about a Namakon suit. Get out of here. We'll be right back right after this, y'all. What? Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. You're tuned in to LA Talk Live, where we're more than just talk. Thanks, mean y'all. Go away, cat, and took that smelly t shirt with me. Young Connection, your one stop connection for all your graphic design and commercial printing needs. Young Connection is a full-service printing and media design company dedicated to providing the highest level of customer service and satisfaction. Young Connection provides swift response and rapid turnaround services for banners, brochures, business cards, letterheads, church bulletins, funeral programs, flyers, logo design, posters, and much, much more, all at an affordable price. Young Connection, the official printing company of LA Talk Live. Give them a call at 310-491-3336. That's 310-491-3336. Or visit their website at www.youngconnection.com. That's www.youngconnection.com. Young Connection Printing and Media Services. Proud sponsors of LA Talk Live, where it's more than just talk. Sisters is an organization that invites and captivates women from all walks of life. Our membership includes 44 women that are constantly growing in the areas of personal development and community involvement. Monthly, we offer free leadership classes at McCade's Restaurant. Journey aims to inform women in the areas of heart disease and HIV and AIDS. Experience the journey now by logging into www.journeymosaicinc.com. Dot com toll free 888-906-5519 journey with no excuses hi this is sequoia neff and this is jay rios and i'm sharon moore 
inviting you to join us every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Battle of the Sexes as we discuss his and her views on topics no one wants to touch. Where we keep it 100% real. And interesting. And it is pure comedy. So don't forget to tune in to Battle of the Sexes Mondays at 7 p.m. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. You can also catch us on iTunes, Radio R&B, Live 365, Radio Flag, and AHA Radio. Or watch and listen directly at LATalkLive.com. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. What's up? It's your girls, Forbidden Forbidden Gems, Gems. inviting you to join us every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. sharp for the hottest, livest talk show, Forbidden Tuesdays. Join us as we expose the new generation of love and dating, all the craziest entertainment news, and the wildest honor interviews with the hottest artists. So don't forget to tune in to Forbidden Forbidden Tuesdays Tuesdays every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. exclusively on LATalkLive.com and the LA Talk Live Broadcast Network. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch and listen directly at LATalkLive.com, reality radio for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. You ready? We did it! Yeah, I figured y'all would like that one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Speak On It. Uh, I'm your host and moderator for tonight, Richard Carr. Wow, what an invigorating conversation. You know, you get a bunch of dudes hanging around talking about politics and or sports. It's going to get real, real hectic. Um, I'm happy to have these guys on my show tonight because they've been on everybody else's show, it seems. I've seen them here at least one more time. Um, And you guys are going to be coming back for Dane's World, I understand. But in the studio with me tonight here on Speak On It, we have the very beautiful Miss Sequoia Neff joins us here tonight. We also have um, both... Two handsome, muscular brothers who join us here in the studio tonight. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jay Rios yes, and Sherrod Moore, co-hosts, co-producers, co-everything of this all-new show called Battle of the Sexes. And I've been corrected. I understand that you're going to be airing your inaugural broadcast on February 3rd. Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's right. So thank you very much for that correction. Miss Sequoia Neff, welcome thank to you. my thank show. You. How about it, right? Thank you for having us. Got a little crazy and hectic up in here a little while yeah, ago. Yeah, a lot it? of yeah. testosterone. Right, right. That's how it goes down on some of these shows. Um, but, you know, you approached us first, um, reached out to us. I don't know quite how you heard about us. Maybe you were here before and said, hey, I've got a concept for a show and two great guys who are going to join me on that show. Sherrod Moore, Jay Reels, you brought them here tonight. I want to talk a little bit about your background, and if I could, I'm going to read a little bit of your bio. Native and current resident of Long Beach. So we got LBC well represented in the house because oh, I yeah. believe all three of you are from Long, Long Beach, Beach, no doubt. A uh, prominent influential figure. Do they mean that about your, your shape or you mean publicly because <laughs> you all are that. all that gorgeous <laughs> as well? Uh, within your community, founder and president of three nonprofit organizations, part you're making, obviously, dedicated to the artistic, academic, and athletic <laughs> development of youth. Uh, driven, determined, uh, well known in her community for activism. Wow! Uh, welcome to the show once again, Sequoia Neff. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, uh, uninfluenced and unencumbered by my reading of your bio. You know what? They can see you, Sherrod. Hold on. <laughs> <I'm only kidding. laughs> oh. All right, we'll take the camera off, Sherrod. Go ahead, right. Sequoia. I always I have to refer back to a conversation that I had with Sherrod because you know we go every day and we do what we think is just a natural day to day thing that we're doing. And he told me, he said, you know, other people look at you that like you're amazing. You don't look at yourself like that. That's just your day to day thing, you know. But um, that conversation kind of stuck in my head, you know. So, I mean, I'm humble in saying that, you know, I don't feel like I I do a lot. But, you know, to everyone else, maybe I do. But um, the most important thing for me 
right now is kids. That's like the number one thing. So I'm into mentoring, teaching, coaching, because I feel like kids are, that's our new society. You know, that will be our new society. So. And they're going to be the ones serving you uh, at McDonald's and Walmart. And (laughs) when you're old, when we're old and gray, these are going to be the people walking the streets, Mm -hmm. having jobs in the service industry, in politics, in every echelon of society. If we don't get them together right now, it's not going to be all that sexy when I get old. Well, and they say 80 yeah. percent of the people, you know, in the town that you grow up in, you end up residing there and having a family. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of these same kids are going to end up living in Long Beach, you know, be our neighbors. You're in the right place uh, for working with young people. We'll talk more about that later. Certainly Kids Talk Live, one of our earliest, longest, well, not longest running shows. I won't say that, um, but a show that we do as a one off periodically to let young people come in to express their Artistic talents, the theatrical talents, yeah, all that kind that. of fun I've stuff. Yeah. So, all right. Let me swing the mic now to Mr. Sherrod Moore. Sherrod Moore. Sherrod. What's going on? Deshaun Moore. Dynamic, delightfully entertaining. Who wrote that? Intellectual, no doubt. <laughs> Long Beach, California, no doubt. Behavioral science. You got a bachelor's degree in that. So, you, certainly, um, that's going to be interesting to lend to a topic called Battle of the Sexes. Um, yes. Published author. Didn't know that you played pro ball. You're full of surprises. Welcome to speak on it, my brother. What's going on? Indeed. What's going on? Right not into that mic. Left. Don't get all shy now. Oh, no, I'm not shy right. at all, man. Nobody tell, tell you that lie. my listeners and viewers a little bit about your background. Most impressive. Um, My background, uh, I say that people go through things in life so that they can make other people's lives better. Um, similar to Sequoia, I work with the youth. I believe that um, when I came up, um, single mom, my mother did a lot of work. Um, and I had to do the, uh, the build a dad theory where one teacher at, at school was my intellectual dad. My grandfather was build my family dad. I like dad. That. Um, uh, the guys at the park were my, my, my sports dads and so forth. So, um, when I got older, I wanted, I, I had two goals and I had a lot of things. Every kid has a lot of dreams and so forth, pro ball, NFL, NBA, lawyer, actor, all of that stuff. They have a lot of dreams. But when I got when I when as I begin to mature, I had two goals. I wanted to be um, thought of as a good person when they close my obituary. And I want my child or children. I didn't know how many I was going to have to say that I was a good father. And I, I wanted them never to feel the way that I felt when I was growing up. So when I started to look for careers and so forth and I got involved in education, I realized that the strength of any organization is their youth. Whether it be a, pop, a peewee team, a, a sports organization, a, a church organization, a political organization, it's the youth that run the organization. It's the youth that go out there and do the footwork. So I got involved with uh, coaching and teaching and um, mentoring, and, and that's where I, I've, I've found to give my for my give back. That's my pay. I don't care about the money. I care about the smile. I care about the feeling, the aha moment that you get from the kids at the end of the day. And you are also a public speaker. We talked a little bit about that. Yes, um, very driven by um, your purpose and dedication to helping young people, helping get them on track for the future. Again, I think we have a vested interest in that uh-huh. as adults and keep living. You'll be old enough and what we plant today, we will certainly reap tomorrow. That is true. Um, I'd like to talk about your experience uh, in the film industry. Okay. Being a principal with the movie Freedom oh, Writers. All right. Let's talk about that. Freedom Writers. Freedom Writers. Yes, indeed. You were both a writer. Yes, sir. And then a character in the movie itself. Yes, sir. Talk a little bit about that experience. Um, the, uh, the movie industry is is is. They say it's a very, fickle bitch yes. anyway, but let's move on. They say it's very difficult to crack and so forth. Yeah. I, I was afforded the opportunity to have a book that um, was published in, in the name of the Freedom Writers from when, my youth to be made a movie in 2007. And when they approached us, they said that they wanted authenticity. They didn't want another dangerous minds and so forth. And um, so they asked us what we felt about it. They asked for our input. So the guy approached me, he said, so you seem like a guy who has a lot to say. I don't know where he got that from. <laughs> and no he idea. said, what would, how do you so feel shy. about, he said, well, could you help us with the dialogue of, of the classroom scenes and so forth? Like, what what's a kid say at this time period? What would they say? How would they react? So we sat down in the room, in a room similar to this, and we dialogued all the scenes 
the classroom scene, so I was really? a part of that. Um, I also helped with the wardrobe and the um, location of, of, of certain scenes. But the main thing is I was actually one of the kids that was written about in, in, the, in the stories. The stories are written anonymously, but I was one of those kids. Um, I'm actually called the catalyst for the Freedom Writers movement. Um, I was a kid who got kicked out of the local high school. I got kicked out of the rival high school, went to the Crosstown rival, uh, carried a gun every day to school, wow. had issues, joined gangs and so forth, um, was on the wrong path, had a lot of bright ideas, but just didn't have any application behind them. So I was on the, a path to uh, either the cemetery or the prison yard. And um, I was helped out by a, a teacher who didn't know any better. Well, of course, we're going to leave it at that when you say that, because, of course, they must have saw something in you at that early age and uh, knew exactly yeah. what they were investing in. Um, last but certainly not least, Mr. J. Rios. Um, and I say that only because I have not yet received your bio, as far as I know. Oh, I'm sorry about <laughs> J. that. J. Rios is also one of the hosts and producers of Battle of the Sexes. J., welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. Thank You're you very, for having very me. Patient, too. I really appreciate that. Um, all right, Jay, so I don't have a lot to say until I get your bio on your page. That's where I'm reading from. Well, I was born yesterday, so <laughs> there is no history. Brother from another planet. It's all to the good. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Jay Rios, man. Well, uh, I would have to say I was born and raised in Long Beach. Uh, grew up a very good life, you know, and uh, took the wrong Rich tour. parents? Is that what it was? No, no. Not rich parents. Rich in love. There you go. Rich in love. But um, tragedy and triumph is uh, pretty much my story. Um, just grew up on the wrong side, doing the wrong things, not because I, I had to, because it was the choices I made. So I basically was self-destructive and destroyed the beginning part of my life with the decisions I made. And I didn't allow my history to dictate my future. So I didn't graduate from high school. I didn't, I didn't graduate from college. But I got to a point in my life where I was like, this is not enough. And I know I'm more and better than what I'm doing. So I uh, basically pulled myself up by my bootstraps and and strived on and, and through willpower and through like strength and my own courage and not being worried about what people think about what I'm doing. I just went on and, and got mine. And so now to this day, I'm an EMT. Um, I'm also a technician at SpaceX. I build rockets, um, wow. something I never thought I would do. Um, I never thought I would be 32 years old. Like I never I, at a point in my life, I never even saw myself. I never have an image of myself being this old because the choices I was making, I was making choices. So I wouldn't make it here like purposely trying to destroy myself without even knowing it. But now that I reflect back on my situations, it's like I've learned from it. And I could tell these young kids like just because this is what you dealt with doesn't mean this is what you have to deal with. Just because it's the cards you dealt, you could throw your cards down and say, hey, I'm playing another card game. So that's me. So awesome. now that you've made it here and you say you're 32, um, didn't think you'd make it this far. Do the gray hairs bother you at all? Name? No, no, no. <laughs> you know, grays. I'm only kidding no, with no, you. No, no, not at all. I'm kidding. See, with these you, guys course. are like the exception to the rule. I mean, you know, when you're younger, they were the kind of guys that you went for, you know, the, the thugs, the gang bangers the hardcore guys you know what i mean tell us more sequoia <laughs> <laughs> now hold on hold on i don't remember that what what i like about these guys is and what i connect to immediately with you brothers is i was a youth at risk mm -hmm. as well you know a lot of similarities in both your stories and i find that um certainly in your belief in self your sense of purpose now because I know, Jay, you also, I believe I was on the right Facebook page. You work with young people as well. Yes. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I really can connect to that. And, and that's important for me because I, I am, by the grace of God, a living example that no matter what happens to you, um, you can make your life whatever you want it to be. It makes me a little nervous to communicate that to young people at times because I never want them to get the idea that I could screw it all up now mm -hmm. because I remember meeting Sherrard or Jay yeah, yeah, yeah. or Sequoia told me you can change your life. You and know, they made it anyway. They right, made it. right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. But the but fact is, if you're one of those young people and you have screwed up, what, what I like to think I represent and cats like uh, Jay and Sherrard represent and for the sisters out there now who are kind of 
set upon by some of the same challenges young men are these days, like the drugs, the gangs, the whole nine, there is this opportunity for you to rebuild your life. But if you can avoid those challenges, it's even better. Absolutely. But there's always a way out, and that's what a lot of young people don't quite get. Exactly. But don't get me on my soapbox. Um, let's talk about Battle of the Sexes. Yeah. What let's, let's let's talk talk about is that about? Let's talk. talk about Time out. Before we talk mm. about it, you build rockets. You can you make a pocket rocket? Since, uh, <laughs> since it's Battle of the Sexes, can you just break some? Are we yeah, about it? You know, I just I mean you know I know some people that's into some stuff. So, but go ahead. Hey, go ahead what's Battle of the Sexes about? about? Well, it's basically giving his and her views. I mean, sometimes we're expressing things that maybe couples don't want to or can't express like to each other in a relationship. You know, um, maybe they didn't have the right words and and we're hitting it on the nail, or maybe they're just too afraid to tell the other person how they feel about something so i mean we're kind of going through all the different topics the things i mean it's like a relationship it's like we we all have so a relationship threesome. how long <laughs> <laughs> they, it's basically unfiltered perspectives from three different opinions and, and perspectives on a situation that are real you know it's not anything fake about it it's just us here talking and we deal with life just like everybody else we ain't no superstars and and oh, I got millions of dollars, and this is how I deal with that. No, we just regular cats that well, deal with issues. I got to ask this question, but I got to set it up this way. You're all such good looking young people. Really, you are. Oh, thank you. Are you all single? I am not. I am. Okay, cool. Cat Daddy. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to comment on that. If you don't want. You can tell me none of my damn business. Call me Mike Daddy. Because I, because I know on Monday nights, uh, both ladies and men are going to tune in. It's pretty interesting that we get a lot more women who tune into our network yeah. than men. But. Not a lot more, by a small margin, within a 10 per- percent uh, more women than men and grown folks, the grown and yeah. sexy crowd. You know, not old like me, but grown and sexy like y'all. Man, married men um, are sexy so, too, man. Well, What's you know, no, that, I'm, 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 I'm divorced. <laughs> married men are only sexy to single women. Man, I'm it's, divorced, old, uh, decrepit, all of that. All, I like to do that. I'm not. But the, the, the point I'm trying to make, uh, thanks from the peanut gallery, <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that when folks tune in, they, they, they're going to like what they see. Oh, thank you. Because you guys look good. You dressed apart. Certainly, uh, this is going to get interesting because you got two guys, one woman. Um, I'm trying to understand how Sequoia is going to pull this off you and not what? feel beat upon. So Sequoia is str- one of the strongest women I've ever met in my life. Uh-oh. One of the strongest women I've met in my life. Oh, yeah. How long you. have you guys known each other? I had oh, to ask that. Sh- Almost oh, our shit. whole lives. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, what, like high school or yeah, Long Beach, uh, way back no, before that even? No. Like 20 something years. Yeah, because yeah. club track. Yeah. 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 We, all yeah we all ran track together. We all ran track together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. And I noticed you, you guys obviously are uh, quite the specimens because you all seem to be working out and in shape, keep yourself fit and all that stuff, right? Try to. Yeah. Part, I hope the goal of the show will be to impart that to couples out there. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, well, you know, we'll, that we'll is definitely that an episode. Stay on your game, <laughs> yeah. right? Get it together, jog a lap. Keep your Do sexy something. going, right? Choose some herbal oh, yeah. life. I need you to get better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> choose some herbal life. some herbal life. Take a line of herbal life and get it together. <laughs> uh, I think this show is going to get a little out of hand, but I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. It's all good. Um, I know you've been spreading the word about it. What kind of response have you been getting from your friends, your business oh, it's, associates, it's, all that kind of stuff? It's been crazy. We've getting a lot of good feedback, a lot of positive responses. So Facebook, Battle of the show. Sexes yeah. Live. we got a Facebook got page. Facebook yeah. up, got Facebook up. Got the Twitter up. Absolutely. We're posting up questions for people to yeah. give us feedback and their opinions. And uh, we're keeping it real, man. You got your Twitter game Twitter, up? Twitter, Instagram, all that's coming. That, all the Battle mm-hmm. of the Sexes stuff. Got a yeah. brand, all of that. Yeah. Be the brand is my motto in 2014. Okay. Be the brand. Be the brand. Everybody like got that. good phones and stuff, so we all good. You got one more time. <laughs> you got one more time to talk about you my phone, that man. Joint. That's, you that's, that's that flip enough. Joint. It's yeah. slide. It don't flip, first of all. Hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I got slide. three. <laughs> I'm just saying. How can you have a green look, screen man. phone in 2014? You know what? Yeah, your phone look like a Nintendo controller. Sorry, I hope it burns when you pee on your anniversary. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're a cold piece of work, man. <laughs> but we all good. Not putting up. All up. right. So we got a few minutes. We need some we... sponsors so I can get a new phone. I don't have to hit his mouth no more. <laughs> so we got a few minutes before we get uh, back to the issues at hand with my co-hosts and right. usual suspects with uh, Radio Raheem and uh, attorney Stephen Burt, uh, some closing comments about the show that will really get people revved up to want to tune in uh, February 3rd for your inaugural broadcast, 7 p.m. Pacific time here on the World Leader and in that broadcast. It's going to be the battle of the sexes. It's going down, it seems. Yes, it is. Like yeah. a stripper at the Barbary Coast. Wait a minute. I mean, 
Wait, Mac what? Going wait, down. wait, where? No, don't no, whoa. Like, Hold come on, how do you man. Know? I read about that on the news. <laughs> yeah, you read about it on the news. <laughs> on the news. Okay. Yes. All gonna, right. So what it's gonna be? So What's gonna be? It's gonna be the hot topics, and everybody loves talking about sex, right? That's like, what I so heard. That's the rumor. Everybody loves sex. So uh, sex. It's it's, sex, it's everything. Sex, Passion, hot topics, relationships. Relationships. Even even different political and religious views within the family. Mm-hmm. Will they be blood? Will they be blood? Yeah. Might be. <laughs> I'm swinging. I don't yeah. give a damn. We also right, have so some good guests lined up. Let's talk about, about your guest lineup because I know you guys are really well connected out there. Yeah, we have a few guests lined up. Um, I don't want to throw it out there right, just yet, yet, but we have a few name brand comedians coming in, so it'll bring a lot of humor to the show. That's going to be hilarious. A couple of my football buddies. All right. So, so tell them what it is. Battle of the Sexes. Battle of the Sexes is live. Monday. Monday. What 7 time? p.m. 7 Pacific p.m. Center time. No yeah. governing cap. I can say what I want to. Oops. That's right. We're Sucks not FCC on. regulated. You can say what you want. Yeah, they don't mess up. Uh, we just uh, don't encourage. Uh, Talking about who the hell is on Hollywood code. All right. So I'm going to send this one out to uh, uh, Sequoia Neft because I think after about a month with you guys, this is going to be one of her favorite theme songs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got Sherrod Moore, Sequoia Neft, Jay Rios. Battle of the Sexes coming next month, February 3rd, 7 p.m. here on LA Talk Live. Say hi to your mama, Neil. And we'll see you guys soon. And you're coming back tomorrow for Dane's World, right? Oh, yeah. You can't get enough. You love radio now, don't you? Yeah, you do. All right, thanks for stopping by, folks. We sure enough appreciate you. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. More from Speak On It. Don't go away. for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hi, this is Sequoia Neff. And this is Jay Rios. And I'm Sharon Moore. Inviting you to join us every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Battle of the Sexes as we discuss his and her views on topics no one wants to touch. We keep it 100% real. And interesting. And it is pure comedy. So don't forget to tune in to Battle of the Sexes Mondays at 7 p.m. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com and the Talk Live Broadcast Network. You can also catch us on iTunes, Radio R&B, Live 365, Radio Flag, and AHA Radio. Or watch and listen directly at LATalkLive.com. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Yo! Shout out to LA Talk Live. It's your man, Dane Webb. Host doing the most. Dane's World every Saturday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Check me out. Y'all be cool. Live free every Saturday, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. If it's 8 too late, don't make that mistake. Don't be lame, y'all. Don't be lame. That's right. That's right. Uh. Yeah. Hello, world. How you living? This is D. Brex, your host of the all-new rap project here on L.A. Talk Live. That's latalklive.com. Or you can find me on iTunes Radio in the R&B section. That's the rap project every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's Wednesdays at 7 p.m. West Coast Time. So don't be late. 
on the rap project, I will be playing the very best of rap and hip hop that goes beyond the ordinary. So connect with me, your host, D Brax, the rap connoisseur, on the rap project every Wednesday at 7, right here on LATalkLive.com, where we are more than just talk. can't lock your mind up. They try to lock your physical. Truth seekers. Oh, oh Mia. Oh, they gonna pay though. They gonna get this. Okay. Put the coke down, now we selling CDs. Regime change from here to overseas. Hustling, moving the muscle in. Do this for my nephew, Justin. Do this for the political soldiers locked in. Negroes on the block getting framed again. Can't go to war cause I ain't got my money right. But when I do, I'ma make sure y'all brothers see the light. Buy the blueprints, what's the best way to get in? How many guns they got, what cell is he in? We moved in on broad daylight when they least expected it. We perfected it. Speak on it. We're back in the building. Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait. You know, Sherrod has decided to join us for this last segment. A Battle of the Sexes is going to be an entertaining ass show, and I'm going to be listening live every time. That's uh, that's something to look forward to for sure. But just to realign the table, you know me, Radio Rahim. You know the man that you never see, the voice of God back there, Rich. Uh, can we can we get your tagline? Uh, the the voice of God serving. How about that? I serve oh, at the behest oh God, of the so, divine. He's, he's sober this week. Uh, okay. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm about to jump up and get me some wine. So if y'all uh, excuse me a moment, he took it to the room. I need, on it. I need oh. the blood of Christ up in me. Oh, okay. Yeah. And there we go. Yet. That there we go. He ain't take communion yet. Hold up, fellas. Uh, the wolf is in the house. Ooh, ooh. Ecor the wolf just joined us all. So uh, be sure to stay tuned. We've got my man Eddie Lamines out there in the uh, waiting room as well, chilling, mixing, maxing, and relaxing with folks. Uh, WDC is in the house. What's the count? Sergeant First Class for Ron Dozier. Dozier, I like to call him. You know what it is. We've got yeah. Jay Reels hanging around. We got Sequoia Neff still hanging around. Of course, we got my man Sharon Moore joining us here at the table. Realign. Man, you on right. camera, man. Go sit your ass down somewhere. Yeah. So we have we got the counselor here, our, our All right, so we introduce our, uh, the table, please sponsor. go right ahead. Yeah, you know. And you may be missing you may be missing one guy on camera. Shock is not on camera, but he thinks that means his mic is off too. So that's smacking you here. <laughs> it's Shock here because we have. Why? Tell him why. Uh, you know, I wasn't gonna mention it. Tell him. I was gonna mention it, Tell but it. you know, Tell if, it. if you thought what might be at the table, <laughs> it's, it's not summertime. So that means it's not watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't fall, 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 fall from the tree. We got fried chicken at the end of the table, off camera, but on mic. Hey, but it's a special relationship I'm having right now with this fr- piece of fried chicken. You know how black people are doing. Listen, listen, when I started talking, chicken. it was a full piece of chicken. <laughs> it's nothing but plate and gristle right now. I don't even know how he did it. Hey. Black people have, once again, you have to understand this, we have a long relationship. We've been courting chicken for a long time. Now, I just want to let you know, that's what happens, you know, when you put a piece of chicken. He is flossing his teeth with this chicken soul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, we, we are we're running a long time. We always run out. <clears throat> so, I got to get to it. Now, most of the listening audience is going to be shocked by this. Those who know me may not be quite as taken aback. It turns out that old black people don't like me. <laughs> I mean, you're too sharp. It's, you're too sharp. It's unsettling. It's a little hurtful. And I haven't healed. But this week, I spoke to Virgil Hunter. Those of the town folk, those in the San Francisco Talk Live, Oakland Talk Live, you know who I'm talking about. Virgil Hunter is the trainer of Andre Ward. Uh, accepted as the second pound for pound best fighter in the game right now, right behind Floyd Mayweather. And he has a fighter coming up facing Canelo Alvarez. Those of you who don't know, Canelo Alvarez was the Mexican with the red hair and the freckles 
that just got whooped by Floyd Mayweather last September. Got that ass whooped. The ginger victim. Right. right. So that guy is a phenomenal fighter, and if you only saw that fight, you can't tell because Floyd Mayweather is flawless and makes everybody look bad. But this fight that's coming up, it required that I do an interview with the trainer. Now, Virgil is a very, very tall. You would think that he's a jazz musician. You would think <laughs> that he plays the long sax, you know. And in during our interview, uh, I'm going to turn to counsel because it's not fair for me to set it up, being that I am biased. I was in the interview, and it happened to me. I, I simply phrased the question like this. If your fighter, being... Alfredo Angulo, who had lost his most recent fight, is going into a fight with Canelo Alvarez and loses his career or his his, his money making ability in this sport is essentially over. He's not going to be considered an elite fighter anymore. Do you think that this was a wise choice based <laughs> on the criticism that you're putting basically everything in this guy's career on the table against a fighter that it appears he's overmatched against? Right. Tell me why. That's a wise choice, and the critics are wrong. He flipped. I'm going to allow the counselor to categorize, you know, to, to uh, characterize his And answer. I'm, I'm going to throw something else out there so you can correct me if I'm wrong. Not only did he lose his last fight to Erislandi Lara, who is a, a, a Cuban defector who was on the Cuban uh, um, amateur team, who is like a pretty skilled boxer, who busted his whole forehead up, had him looking like a Cro-Magnon. All this piece up in here was swollen out to here like this. Looked like he was wearing a sun visor down on his brow. And then he got cracked in the eye. And that piece, he looked like, seriously, he looked like he had a softball on the side of his eye. But I think he had one fight in between this. But then two fights prior to that, he got knocked the F out by your homeboy that's uh, trained by Ann Wolf. What's his name? Oh, uh, yeah, he lost to... Uh James Kirkland. James Kirkland, who's trained by Ann Wolf, and that's a whole nother topic. We could just do a whole right, show on her. <laughs> the, the Ann Wolf segment is coming. Yeah. Stay tuned for that. We'll yeah. be promoting it throughout the month. But if she comes shit about in the studio, show, I'm, I'm not ass. coming. I'm telling you, I'm phoning in Don't my piece. talking shit about Ann Wolf. I ain't talking no mother. shit about oh, Ann Wolf. Let's make that clear. And if you're listening, we love I ain't you. I'm shit. sorry so ahead good. of time. I don't yeah. know them. I'm, I don't even. So know anyway, them. so this is a guy that's coming off of losing two out of three, both stoppages. He got knocked out against James Kirkland, and then he had an interim fight, and then he goes up against Irislandi Lara, and he gets pieced up until seriously his forehead. He looked like a Klingon. We get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> what Raheem was asking is like, considering that your fighter who was considered an up-and-coming guy and, you know, oh, amongst yeah. the top of the ranks in his <laughs> weight class, has just suffered these two defeats. Is it smart to go up against Canelo, who's considered maybe the best in that weight class, you know, absent having gotten his ass whooped from Floyd, but Floyd doesn't, he doesn't campaign in that weight class. So what this guy was like just went ballistic. <laughs> he just went ballistic, and he's like, that's perceptions. That's the perceptions. I'm dealing with the real. And he made a comment which was true, and this is something I haven't even said to um, to Raheem, and I don't even think it would have mattered. But what the guy says was, "Well, if Canelo loses, Canelo just lost. If he if he loses, it's detrimental to his career as well." Very true. Which he you right, know which he now, did lose. But now, and what he was what what he was saying. I think what he was saying was, because Raheem put it in a tricky kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he made him defensive. You know what I'm saying? He made him have to feel as if he had to protect his client. But you he know? does. You and he got to protect his client. But he was Raheem was telling the truth. Like, you know, okay, oh boy just lost. You just lost. And then, okay, y'all getting ready. To fight. You're going to lose this one. You know, you were basically right, 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 saying, you're, you're right, going to lose. Saying, I'm saying that the, 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 the chips are stacked against you. You're coming off an injury and a loss. It would <laughs> appear that this would be a, a, not a, a wise decision based on the fact that he went off for you. So you need saying, another interim you're fighter. You're saying his, his fighter was predisposed to getting his ass whooped. Yes. 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 And he had an ass whooping gene. And, and, and a terrible disadvantage. <laughs> yes. a terrible disadvantage. He had a recessive <laughs> ass whooping trait. Right. So you don't want to go with a recessive ass whooping gene into a dominant ass ring, an ass whooping ring. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. right. You know, a younger, more hungry fighter. But here's the thing: what what I was saying when it regarded the two fighters, both coming off a loss. This <laughs> uh -huh. is true. One fighter is a pay per view draw, which is why this is yeah. this is even a pay per view event, and the other one is trying to establish himself right. as an elite fighter. So when I use Mayweather 
as an example, because Canelo just lost to Mayweather, Mayweather's so good, so dominant, undefeated at the pinnacle of boxing. When you lose to him, you don't get the same kind of criticism yes. as when you lose to your peers. Because at this point, Mayweather isn't even considered anybody's peer. Yeah. So matchmakers and audiences alike will still go watch a fighter who just lost to Mayweather and still consider him an elite fighter. He's just another guy who couldn't get it done. But Virgil, right. Virgil <laughs> try to get personal because, I mean... He got to right, protect so, his wait. people. He know he got to protect his it, his fighter, his boxer. And, 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 I, and I forgot about the Mayweather wait, piece because okay, his logic was faulty on that. Right, right, because he thought he 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 already had in his mind like, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna get him with the Mayweather thing, yeah. right? Because it turns out that young black people don't like me that much either. So <laughs> he's not like a lot of that. <laughs> you know, so Floyd Mayweather is one of those young black people who take exception to Radio Raheem. And we've had our beefs in the past. You know, we've it's public. What was, what was Everybody one knows about it. What was one beef? Just one very right, quickly. One, one beef. One beef. And again, these things are never my fault. I really don't understand what's wrong with you people. You're very volatile. Are you like the Uncle and Ruckus of radio and boxing? I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. Uncle a lot. I, I, mean I, I like all the boxing new niggas. niggas. Ah. <laughs> don't trust them new niggas over there. Over there. Them new boxers over there. Over there. So everybody, all right, we're going to take this little side road since you asked shock the floyd mayweather manny pacquiao fight that never happens everybody wants to see no one can figure out why it won't happen so i had an opportunity to speak one-on-one -on -one with floyd mayweather this was two years ago and we were in the heat of supposed <laughs> negotiations and this is back when the 60 40 thing was happening uh -huh. floyd was like oh yeah i'll take the fight but i gotta get 60 you get 40 so obviously pacquiao wasn't going for that and at the same time Floyd was on one of his gambling, uh, you know, degenerate rages, and he's tweeting out betting slips, millions of dollars of betting slips on college basketball, college football, NFL, all these things. And I simply asked him, because you can't come to terms with the contract and you can't decide what the split's going to be, obviously you're a gambling man. Why not take winner take all? Floyd, you believe you're going to win. He believes he's going to win. Okay with that. Win or take all. He said, this is Floyd Mayweather with Radio Raheem saying peace. That party's over. That party's over. You messed up all the churches money you know, with that one. Right. But you know Floyd likes to bet on you know, football games, you know, basketball games and all those kind of things. You don't believe in playing slots or maybe some right, shit so like that. so my only assertion is why not bet on yourself? So that's, a, that's, a, good, million, that's a good right? question. I'm saying Floyd, it sounds like you're saying Floyd didn't believe in Floyd. That's what it I'm saying like. Floyd wasn't willing to bet on Floyd. And I asked the question, basically, why not? You didn't want to bet on black? Could, I could, thought you bet on black in Vegas. Who you think would have won? <laughs> right. <laughs> I right. Know, apparently he thought it was Russian roulette. <laughs> who, who you think would have won that fight? If listen, they ever, whoever listen, get, if they ever get it going, listen, who you think? They're gonna be pissed by the time they fight. Listen, five the years, five on. years ago, four years ago, two years ago, last week, today, Floyd Mayweather dominates Pacquiao. I'm saying he doesn't get past the seventh round, so I don't understand, and I never have. Is he afraid? Why Mayweather is so resistant to this fight? And I, and I will say, it's Mayweather who's resistant to the fight. There yeah. have been errors. Because this fight has gone through eras of yeah. boxing, which he had a good point. I wouldn't have taken a fight with no drug, drug testing. Test, yeah. That's absurd. Oh, no, no, but no. Nobody wants that to fight drug Yvonne testing Drago. issue right. has been off the table for years now, unbeknownst to most people. Pacquiao has agreed to the drug testing over two years, yeah. three years ago now. Yeah. So that's not the issue. The 60-40 split, I think, is absurd because even though it's true that Floyd gets more pay-per-view buys you know, than Pacquiao does... Pacquiao Mayweather gets more pay-per-view buys than any show ever in the history of pay-per-view. Yeah, it is no half, doubt. And you can't have it's Pacquiao Mayweather without Andrew. Pacquiao and Mayweather. Yeah. So it's it it, it doesn't it, it doesn't lend itself to the calculations of their previous respective pay-per-view numbers because Pacquiao is respectable. He's not at Mayweather's level, but without the two of them, it takes two to tango. It's mm. a marriage. It's 50-50. That fight needs to happen, and it's Floyd's fault that it's not happening. No, he can it make is. that it, fight happen. At this point, it, it is. Three at years this ago. point, it is. Now, Floyd is in a unique position, and I hate that we, you know, have to switch the topic, but I got to speak on this because we got off Virgil. We're on Floyd right now. It happens. Speak on it. But, it uh, happens. but uh, uh, <laughs> Floyd is in a unique position right now, given everything that's happened over the past few weeks, to really gangster uh, a, a leverage percentage against Pacquiao. 
Why? Because Pacquiao's trainer, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, um, came out and basically admitted through Pacquiao under the bus, if in my estimation, and and admitted that Pacquiao's strength coach at the time was giving him some mystery drink with some mystery ingredients that nobody knew what it was. It's the same drink Jordan had when he scored 85 against the Lakers. So that's special, <laughs> that's special Gatorade. So, so, I hate special Gatorade. So, I need so, to so to that, that, that was like some low-key justification of, of Floyd's uh, assertion before that this dude was on some, you know, I mean, who all the think, PED. Who all think that really Floyd may be running from Pacquiao? He I don't think he definitely is not making this fight, and he he's, could. He's the reason, but it's not. I, it's not because he can't I mean, whoop his ass. I believe he what is definitely it? knows he can whoop his I ass. I think it's more. It's, it's more money in the in the in the uh, hype of the fight. And, and, and there's a hundred million dollars. That's a lot of money right now. Yeah. Before we get to merchandising oh. and hotels, you know, there's too much money. There's no way there's more money in avoiding the fight than there is in the fight. Well, and the and I'm wondering building to it. I'm wondering if it's just like straight up stick it to Bob Arum. I'm, right. I'm trying to figure out. It got to be is. something. Yeah. I'm I think I think Floyd is. is offended by the idea that he needs this fight. That boxing fans say, you know, no matter how many people you beat, how undefeated, how dominant you are, if you don't mm. fight Pacquiao, we'll never consider you one of the greatest, and certainly not the greatest. But didn't Pacquiao he takes get exception slipped. to that? Pacquiao got he Pacquiao right got that, slipped. That's part of the reason why by Floyd the takes very same to it. dude. Who Floyd well, was luck. able to get the most lopsided CompuBox victory in the history of CompuBox at the time, and it's probably still standing. Floyd mopped the floor with JMM just, just, and would do it again okay, and again and again. Said, but with that said, Styles make fights, not to sound like I, a cliche. I know everybody and says that he fought him five, four times. You know, I mean, you get a guy four bites at the apple, mm. he's subject to get the worm. But oh, out of none of those four times. Did Pacquiao ever mop the floor with him like Floyd yeah. did and have such yeah. a, a lopsided compu box victory? He did whoop Joe Lewis's ass. He, 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 <laughs> he did, he did Again, I think I think at the top of this segment, we've definitely established Floyd as not only the dominant right, writer yeah, in right, the game, right. and so much so that you don't even get a ding on your record for right. losing to him. So right. again, it just it perplexes me why he won't take I, this fight I'm right there and, with you. and shut it down. Just shut it down. Now, where I was going, okay, so we had within the last few weeks the revelation from Freddie Roach that Pacquiao may have indeed been partaking in some PEDs from his from his sport uh his strength yeah, coach. Think. And then last Is week no. last <laughs> week Allegation. Pacquiao comes out and says, I'll fight Floyd for free. Now what? if Floyd had for a brother, charity for I charity didn't for charity. If Floyd, yes he did. For yes he did. For charity. If Floyd had a brother like me in his camp I'm sending him that contract the next day. Go whoop his ass right. I'm sending him that contract the next day. Sign your name right here where you get zero and I get 100% and watch him fold on that shit. Well, and watch him fold on that shit. Okay. But he didn't do it. So now Pacquiao gets to walk around saying, I offered to fight him for free. He still won't take it. And I'm like, I mean, God but, damn it. But boy, you know what? Counselor, you know what? At the end of the day, though, that's more hype. You know I know what I'm saying? That, but I'm saying call his bluff. I understand. Is out his ass. But That's you know, I, mean. I think there may be something psychological going on with Floyd with Pacquiao because he know Pacquiao hits pretty hard. Right at the end of the day, look, he's got to be worried about something. It's something. I mean, for as much money as Floyd makes, basically this fight he could get his entire Showtime contract, six fight deal. What Showtime paid him to, for six fights. He can make in one fight. You now, if, you're, if your name is money, <laughs> what else are you about? No, no, I agree. TV I agree. My mama, my daughter, my daddy got his ass knocked hey. out for hundred million dollars. Hey, I, I agree, took it, bro. I took this hundred million, million ass, ass with a black eye and a check. I go in there, and you know Floyd's so fucking small. I agree, he's dude. He's a little dynamite. Like he must. I'll just, fight Mike Tyson you know for ten million dollars. I wouldn't go in there. I'll fight Mike Tyson for a Happy Meal right now. The way time is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, besides Happy Meal, you ain't even got to put the toy in it. Me and Mike hey, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, if y'all want to get punched by Mike Tyson, I'm serious. Wow. That may may be some serious shit. You may never wake up. I don't, I don't up. want to. Okay. You, you, you misunderstood me. I don't want to. 
But um, yeah, for for the for, for a million dollars, money. you'll say you'll fight yep, Mike. Yep, yep. I, I'll just trust myself to recuperate mm. from that. <laughs> I've been in several car accidents. I don't think you can hit harder. I I'll got hit. I by got hit by a Toyota Tundra. Hey, what does that say about money? I put my car over. I don't think Mike Tyson get hit harder than Toyota. Me, Sequoia, and Jay battle the sexes against Mike Tyson. Hey, look, I'm gonna let them get hit first. You know we got to negotiate. Hey man, spread those punches around, man. Spread them around a little bit. She can hit you like what? She's from Long Beach. But what does that say about people? We used to have this conversation earlier about people, their values and money, right? We, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. No, we were to, You know, and today. Here's the thing. Before we get too far off, because we did, we did take a, we a still side road to the pack y'all. The Brooklyn right. Brawler. So we're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna take exception to the whole logistics about Canelo versus Angelo, right. which was right. in a conversation for another day now. But the real crux of this problem that I have, and I'm, I'm putting it out to you to help me solve this problem, is it just me, or is there an issue with old black people <laughs> and young black people asking them questions? It feels like <laughs> they, oh, yeah, yeah. You they, you know, ask the old black they, shit. if okay, for instance, even Floyd, right? <laughs> Floyd won't speak to me anymore. We're on we're on very bad terms. We don't text or anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and it's simply because I'm asking him the questions that people actually want the answers to. If he's sitting on ESPN and they ask him that question, he answers it. Right. If Virgil Hunter is sitting on HBO and they ask him what I asked him, he respects the interviewer and answers the question. Now, you can be evasive. But you're not going to be rude. You're not going to shut the interview down. But we only treat each other that way. Well, it's, it's because uh, Raheem is that, you know, young black guys don't have a lot of respect for older black men. They don't give a <laughs> fuck about what they want to talk about. They don't They don't want to hear them. They want to really they want to catch him. <laughs> catch him. Ridicule them. <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They I want to know. dance around the What about the wisdom? You got to listen to the wisdom. He get me look, he may have a little bit of wisdom somewhere. You know, that's what we forgot. You know, I'm the other guy and, and I understand what you're saying and right. there's a lot of hate between older uh, if Bill Cosby was sitting at this table right now, who yeah. we all respect, you would have to cut his ass off. <laughs> you would have yeah. to. Hey, Bill, you're Otherwise, talking too fucking much. Right, you and can't. share the mic around a little this bit. This is what Virgil Hunter does. You can't <laughs> allow old black people to start rambling because they will Thank not. So they much. will they not. have too much information. Too much. That's that's all it is. You got, they got too, much, too much going TMI, on. TMI, nigga. Yeah, that's just fucked up. I mean, look, the reality of it is, it's so fucked up. At one, t- <laughs> at one time, we used to listen to our elders and get wisdom and information. That was before Google. Uh, and well, that's true. And uh, but at the same time, you know, there's still that aesthetic effect with you know elders that. There's some shit that we can't get off Google, right? That some <laughs> elders. <laughs> oh my God! Bitch, did you, call it? you know what? You know what the fuck it is, <laughs> goddamn! You know about getting your ass whipped, uh, goddamn! Uh, for those of us that get home, there is no Google. <laughs> 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 don't go Google. to the URL. I don't know what's there. I don't want to be held responsible. There's a Google lot, somewhere. <laughs> some shit you can't. Oh, some shit you're not gonna be able to get. But older people. You got to think about it. When he was sitting there listening to you and you was questioning him, Raheem, he was pretty much thinking, you disrespectful mother, you young, you know, that's what he was thinking. And that's my thing. You know what I mean? That's my thing, though, is that they're beyond reproach. I, You know, I mean, I've dealt with several older black men. Now, some are like, I hope that I will be like at my... I'm in my I'm in my like middle you. age, we'll call it. You know what I'm saying? I'm in my midlife crisis. What you fifty already? But I'm, I'm damn near. And for black expect, you know, damn black life expectations. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he's twenty one. <laughs> so he's, he's, he's on his right. way out. But 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 I'm I, I already have I have a cat a cat that came up under me that's doing way better than me now. He started off working in my firm. He's now a top cat at NBC <laughs> in their in their legal department. But he mm-hmm. never forgives to give me a shout out because I always just tried to big him up as much as I could. You right. know what I'm saying? But I have worked under some brothers. It's it's those it's those civil rights baby boomer black brothers. <laughs> that these motherfuckers are sellouts, man. These are the cats. Ah, that the that's the a whole other conversation older, too. Yeah. And Virgil falls into that into that category. They and it's and it's not even just that they have a little bit of. 
you know, we we would give them respect for the extra little bit of wisdom that they bring to the game from their experience, <laughs> right? <laughs> but then at the same time, they don't acknowledge that, hey, man, you know what I'm saying? You, you're still analog, man, and the world is digital. We got right. some shit to add, too. Right. And they don't want to listen to that shit. And, so, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Are you saying that the wisdom comes with condescension? Yes, absolutely. 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 I mean, think about absolutely. it like Thanks this. Thanks for, you know, summarizing I mean, that. Think about me. it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, think about it like this. You know, you've been you've been say doing your thing all this time and then some 12 or 13-year-old, 15-year-old kid comes to you and you know, maybe smarter because I believe you know they definitely have, yeah. you know, some wisdom within themselves. It's but evolution. They, Exactly. I believe people that are born later are obviously older and smarter and have more to the game. But at the same time, you can learn something. It's just a matter of those things have been kind of stripped from us in a sense that you don't care about listening to some old cat because you think he's slow. You think he's not up to new media, new technology, and you think he's talking from a paradigm from some old shit. And I, I get that. At the same time, but that's a mischaracterization right. of myself. I just the, want to say you know, for the, the world record. is moving faster now. We don't have time to sit on the stoop like a spike. <laughs> <laughs> and, and wake <laughs> up! <laughs> All the wisdom. That's so funny, though. Now look, before we bounce, there is because this, you know, it's not a black show; just black people on the show. Yeah, but exactly. we do feel some responsibility to the community from which we come, and there is a threat. There's a threat in our community, and we can't allow this show to go go past uh, seven thirty without mentioning it. So black kids well, well, Justin thank, Bieber. Thank Justin you very much. Bieber <laughs> is ruining the black community <laughs> one unsuspecting Negro at a time. <laughs> no oh, one, so this is what's up. flying under the radar, and I and it, I will speak on it. Please because do. we all the spotlight is on the trouble he's in and all he got arrested oh, yeah. and he egged somebody's house. But nobody's talking about the niggas that are getting arrested in the shadows right. hanging with Justin Bieber. Right. One at a time, he's taking our entire community down. He's not even an American. He's a sleeper cell. <laughs> All right. that, that's my own blast. I mean, they imported Conrad. racism. Yeah. They imported racism. That's what they did with Arnold. That's that's all they did. They imported racism. No, it's like it's like a sprite, like uh, overseas, like overseas. Trickery. It's some kind of fairy <laughs> dust sprinkled in the corner, and you you watch the squirrel, and over here they're, they're stuffed on the slave ship. We don't right. even what's Khalil? Khalil? Khalil is doing time right now right, behind right. Justin Bieber. Right. Justin Bieber is free. What? So they went to his house. Because when he ate someone's house, he wanted to be like, you know, that's a bad thing. Shame on you. And went in there and just arrested some some party or some cat he was kicking it with. I don't even know his name. He's in jail right now. Because he had possession of, of something boy. in, in oh. Justin's house, though. How do you have possession of somebody in somebody else's in shit? Somebody else's he, house. He's got possession of me. I want him arrested for planting these drugs on me. Right, right, right. Right. Wow. If you go into a brother's house and you got drugs on you, everybody's, everybody's going, going to jail. Exactly. Everybody is they going call, to jail. That's what I'm talking Mama, about. the police want you. They're they going to take you to jail, too. They, <laughs> yeah. they, you they arrest pay. the fish. The right. fish stop swimming like I wasn't with them. Yeah, how, you're going to be arrested in somebody's house for something that you have. How do you have something on you? In somebody else's house. If the drugs, because we all know he's a junkie now, right? right. We saw his right. complexion. Oh, yeah. There's no mean, doubt about it. It's, it's over with. So yeah. we know the drugs was out on the table. They was doing drugs at the time. I want to understand how a foreigner, because all these Mexicans is going to jail too. You get stopped for uh, reckless driving as a legal immigrant, and you're looking you at deported. deportation, right? This is – how old is Justin Bieber? He's a, a, a tween? 19? Drag racing in a Lamborghini, kidnapping white women, and <laughs> and that's the American dream. Negroes. That's the American <laughs> dream. Still allowed. To Buy you say. some niggas, get a fast car, and take a bitch. That's the American <laughs> dream. Right, right, right. Welcome oh, to America, right. Justin. That was a Hollywood can, shuffle. We can you never, we can never to, kick yeah, quite out before take somebody money. crosses yeah. the line. Take the money. Three minutes. We're almost <laughs> out. Take the hoe. <laughs> we're almost take out. Take the hoe. And the black NFL. You know, that'll be where, you know, all the things we've said. No way called anybody a bitch. Hey, and here you hey, are, three minutes before the, the show's dream. over. The American dream. Rich, welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say to all that, man. You know, it's been quite an invigorating show. Welcome I got to gotta tell you. 
<laughs> right. we are going to get this thing wrapped out. But before we do, I'd like to thank our special guest, first and foremost, Miss Sequoia Neff, who joined us earlier tonight. Jay Rio. What's your name? I like is. Your hair. <laughs> And, <laughs> and 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 the delightfully entertaining and intellectual Sherrod Moore right, <laughs> right. Us from the crew of Battle of the Sexes airs their inaugural broadcast February third, twenty fourteen here on LA Talk Live. Man, thank you all. Why don't y'all run over to the mic with Sherrod uh, and give us a little barbershop. Trio thing before we wrap yeah. it up. Yeah. 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 I want to hear some, some, some harmony. A little closer. You said closer. no closer. man ever. Hey, I got to warn you, folks. <laughs> One of my favorite sayings, Sequoia, to all these gentlemen around here is a thin line between love and a lawsuit. So be careful, oh, all right? <laughs> anyway, uh, I know, I'm only kidding. Uh, that went under the radar. Actually, I'm not. These are my boys. Kidding. Awesome. <laughs> Get closer so to that microphone. Thank you Come so on, much for having us on the show. It is truly my pleasure. Jay Rios, thank you for having us on the show. Mr. Carr, we're good. Thank you. Just rich, baby. Just rich. Awesome. We're gonna All have right. Awesome time. So thank Battle you guys once again. Battle of the Sexes. Don't take those headphones off yet. You ain't done. You got to finish what you started, uh, Sherrod Moore. Uh, starting uh, February 3rd, Monday night, 7 p.m., all new show. I'm really looking forward to it. You guys are really going to turn it up. I already know. It's going to be a mess. So be sure to stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to thank, once again, the usual suspects who joined us tonight. Uh, attorney Stephen Burt, the official sponsor of... Here, here. Speak on <laughs> beer it. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> A beer here. <laughs> and beer. also... I'm empty um, Me too. Uh, Radio Raheem, man, what did I say about you, dude? You are just a beast with it, dude. He's a beast, man. Right? Beastly with it, man, I'm telling you. I want to thank my good friend Shaquem Williams who joined us here tonight as well. Hey, thank you very much, man. Bear here, bear you are crazy kid. Bear here. I want to thank WDC Radio uh, Sergeant Ron Dozier in the house tonight. A mystery guest in the cut, chilling. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. He's such a gentleman too, man. He's such a really. That's right. such a don't great get, guy. Don't get him talking. He's an old black man. <laughs> I was just going to say, he got some wisdom. <laughs> but maybe I need to have him come back on the show. Y'all need to show some respect. <laughs> old black man show. <laughs> we be telling stories real long. I met this little pretty young thing. Hey, man, I'm trying to go out here and get some. Come on, man. Hurry. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. I also want to thank <laughs> our good friend, Eddie Lamonds, who joined us here in the studio tonight. I wanted to get him on. We ran out of time. Be sure to stay tuned. Coming up in just 30 minutes, The Shock Factor with Shock Williams, yeah. Chef Momo. Um, Chris Style. Chris Style in the L-I-S-E. house. Yes. Yes. Wow, it's going to be a crazy show. Yeah. yeah. Joining you tonight on the air is going to be a gentleman who is in our artist development rotation program. Yeah. His yeah. name is Ridicule. We're going to be featuring some of his yes, music sir. tonight. Uh-huh. That's going to be hot. They're waiting in the wings in the green room. We're about to have some more fun. Be sure to yep. stay tuned. 30 minutes from now, in about 29 now, The Shock Factor with Shock Kim Williams, Chef Momo, uh, Chris Dahl, and that crazy goddamn crew. Gentlemen and lady, thank you very much, man. You guys made this show uh, one of the most exciting shows we've had. Uh, and I like that you guys are getting more engaged with it and the content you're bringing. Um, radio's a craft of the voice. Stop yelling on the goddamn mics! Anyway, I'm just joking with you. Um... Any last comments or questions before we go? I mean, that's it. I'm, I'm stealing some of shots right now. I'm just glad. I appreciate you guys letting me sit in on your show, man. You guys are awesome. Yep. Uh, let's oh, Monday, Monday, at Monday at 7. Monday at 7. Monday at 7. I got a right seat there. for you right here. I got Speak a on it. Anyway, this has been Speak on It for this <laughs> week's edition. We'll be back again next week, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. God willing. I always like to leave with one of my favorite sayings, and I couldn't really get this together last week, but this is one of my favorite sayings, right? Keep doing what you're doing. Keep getting what you got. If you like what you're getting, keep doing it a lot. I'll leave you with that. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next right there. next yeah, Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific second. Standard Time. Gotta think about Here on the <laughs> World Leader <laughs> <laughs> Internet Broadcast, this is LA you Talk Live. We on. are more than just talk. <laughs> Stay tuned. More <laughs> great programming <laughs> coming <laughs> right ahead. Yeah. Speak on it. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. When I'm walking down the street. Where you held my head Now I reach 
and all I touch is base. An empty, empty place. Sadness and tears, that's all you left me. They're such bad souvenirs of love that once was oh so very great. The greatest love reaching all the way. Live Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we're more than just talk. Stay tuned. If you're like me, it's lunchtime, and I want to thank our sponsors of the Faith on Frontline Radio broadcast.